Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here, and welcome back to another YouTube video. On today's video, where we've wrecked some, it's a live comment, it's not a short, it's episode number 10, and it's a big old game in the league. We've got Bolton away from home at the Tough Sheet Community Stadium, where we have an opportunity to go equal top, or if not top, on goal difference, or we could actually find ourselves into fourth place. Things are going extremely well, obviously, if this is all the case in our first season here in League One. And give it a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and give it a like, because next episode is also a live comp, because we get Premier League, Tottenham Hotspur, and the third round of the FA Cup at the race course. That is correct, we've got the opportunity to slay a Goliath. Important to note, Spurs have just sucked Ange, because they sit 16th in the Premier League, so... We might be catching them at a really good time. Look, if you're looking forward to that episode, that's the next one. So make sure you stick around and watch this episode and watch the next one if you're watching in the, you know, in the history. If you're watching this all and they come out, it's probably coming out the day after that Spurs one. So get excited. With that being said, obviously we did do a short one after 18 games played where we were, you know, fighting for the title. I'm going to recap on a few things quickly. Obviously the data hub I touched on. Um... You know, we're starting to get a little bit better in terms of our uh, in terms of our goals. We were at some stage about six, seven, eight goals under our XG. We're now down to negative three, but we were somehow eight or nine goals under our XGA. And you know, we still got the second defense best defense in the league. Preston's actually starting to catch us as well, even though they face a lot of chances. They seem to do enough to keep it out. But yeah, Bolton have fast becoming the team to beat in the comp and they don't concede too many goals. Um, we're, we're having a high quality amount of chances but not putting enough away. Um, and yet again, with the amount of chances we create, we probably should be putting away a lot more. With that all being said, it's been very good. Since uh, we did do the recap here, which I think was before the Barnsley game, we have yet to lose. We did draw a game to Stevenage where we were lucky at the race course to get a point, even though we were slightly the better side. Um, and we just played a game against Knots on stream, which we all had a bit of a chuckle at in the chat. Of course, our links are down below to our Twitch, where we had a 3.25 XG. Paul Mullen's the big one that we do have to speak about here today, though. With Paul Mullen, unfortunately, has not scored in his last few games and is starting to be a little bit patchy. Um, he looks a lot better when he has someone alongside him. We have made a transfer signing of George Edmondson, who looks this good. You know, we signed him for 150Ks, and, uh, you know, he's very good for this level from Ipswich. Arguably could keep us up in the championship next year if we get there as well, starting to forward think. Um, you know, we got Liam Morrison, we got Mbake. Do I dare move to a five at the back system, go back to two up front and a five back, get rid of the, one of these midfield spots which have been a little bit, you know, underwhelming this year? It might be an option. If you look at the team, this is the team that we will be selecting today, but Cozier Dewberry has just picked up an injury. He's out for the next eight days to three weeks of pulled knee ligaments. I'm very hopeful that he can feature at least against Spurs, but unfortunately at the moment... He is not having a good time of injuries. He's averaging a 6.81 in the league. Uh, but he always looks like he's quality on the ball. If you have a look at the injuries, if I eventually click on the right tab, he has had a lot since his young start. And he is an injury-prone footballer at this level. When you can take kids that are this good, you just take him. And if they are injury-prone, you just you know, you just wear it and hope that you get a run of good games out of him. They hit some good form. And in this 4 for 3 he has looked very decent, just hasn't had a lot of match ratings that have gone his way. If you were to look at his probably recent form, you know, 7.3 and 8.8, 7.1, started to really come into his own before getting injured against the not in the Notts County game. So we're in a good spot is the Nux and the Crony. Um, if we have a look at Bolton Wanderers, yeah, they're a team that don't really lose, but they just lost the Barnsley away from home. They play a five at the back system, which is going to be hard to penetrate, and I'm very tempted to move into five at the back myself. That definitely won't be happening before Spurs. It's going to be 4 for 3 all the way till we play Spurs, 4 for 3 when we play Spurs, and then hopefully... Um, look, hopefully not. Hopefully we just stay in the system because Omari Benjamin is playing. He's developing this well, ready up to three stars, and he can play very well on the left. We'll say if we go to the right, if we go to the five at the back, um, we get him up front. He's not bad for this division either. With that being said, let's get into it. We obviously got the starting 11. It's all in there. Elise has actually started playing for us on the right-hand side. If Mbake could play on the right properly, Morrison could play on the right, or the new signing could actually play on the right, which I don't think he can, uh, is George. Somewhat could, but 27 are not great. I would play him. 
but it's not really the case, unfortunately. So the back four is pretty settled. Lions, Foster's having a very good year. Gabberman, Coventry, Elliot Lee's actually going to move to the right here. We are going to get the uh, Andre Gomez into the team, even though I don't rate him in there. And George, um, Jordan Davis will come into there. And that is going to be your 11 to start against Bolton, who are top of the tree. Let's see what we can do. Give me a score prediction if you're watching and stream. And uh, obviously, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's go and have a look at this Bolton team and the pre-game cut screens. Let's see what we can do. So it's Baxter, it's Tull, Santos, Johnston, Jones, Morley, Inwood, Dempsey, Thomas, Charles, and I think it's either Kanu or Cullum. I missed the last one, unfortunately. We're obviously lining up in the 4-3-3 three, three against their five at the back system. The best defense in the league goes in against the, you know, a team that can do a few things. I will say that we've been lucky. A lot of the first part of this year when playing 4-1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, we needed the 4-3 to score late goals for us. There's been times where the 4-3 has bailed us out. And there's been times where even moving back into the 4-1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two has bailed us out. Um, Charles was his name. So Charles. And I don't think I said Undulu. I don't know. Anyway, that's Bolton's side. They look very good, Bolton. Let's see what we can do. I would happily take a draw from this. Bolton look like I see that side that keep the ball. Look at this. Bold and they're keeping the ball, I know, tomorrow, but we have not given them a chance yet. And apparently, according to the match momentum, we're the team, even without the ball, that are having the better of the game. And I will take that against a team that is currently top of the tree. As you can see, though, a point today would actually drop us into third. Don't particularly mind. I'm not fussed. Like, if you were to tell me right now we go very patchy from here to the end of the season, we finish 6, 7, 8, I'd probably still just take it because there's a lot of growth this team can have. I'm very happy with that. The boys are too. A very boring game. I'm sorry to say, boys, usually these big affairs, these big, you know, league games don't lead to too much unless we're the dominating force and we're not. Gomez, who's not particularly a good footballer, averaging a 6.4, and uh, look, I'm tempted to sell him to get the money in. Finds a Morrison, Elliot Lee, back a line of Morrison, Gabberman. Good boy out to Elliot Lee. Doesn't win it, though. If he wins that flick on header, we're in. Now here come Bolton, Dempsey. Jones, try to get across. Number starting the queue in the box. Goes back a line of Morley. Hits one from distance. Arthur watches it go past his post. 55 minutes played. Not the greatest game. We're not keeping a lot of the ball. There's not too much going on out there. They're starting to dominate a little bit more. I might actually give him something as a change up. Haven't done this too much. Mullen's going to go in. Benjamin with Elliot Lee. Get, nah. Eventually get the right way around. Thank you. Andre Graham is going to come off. I'm going to bring in Tom uh, Tom O'Connor and move him around. I'm actually going to bring Jordan Davis in as well. He's not played many minutes. Main reason I'm doing this is because he's on the bench. Don't need the red card. Maldini, by the way, boys, is developing very well and is having a decent year at a 6.95 when he has played. So get him in normal central back on defence. Don't mind Lance Foster on that side. I think Elise for the more aggressive Anthony Ford is going to go in there. And Oli Palmer, who looks like he's leaving. Lyle Taylor's retiring. Same with Lowton. Both are retiring. I might try and see if we can... Uh, never mind. I was going to say see if we can snatch one late. The change of system we can see straight away. So maybe we should not have changed. It is not a good tactical master straight, that one, unfortunately. But anyhow, good ball. Just both centre-backs losing. Miadini probably caught Cole straight away there. Highlight from kickoff though. Let's see if the system works now. O'Connor, Lions, Foster. Really do like how the 4 one 2 one 2 looks in terms of a system. Just for whatever reason this year, it's not produced too many goals or too many moments. But when we start 4 3 3 teams seem to fail to adapt to us quickly when we go into this system. And, well, that's a save and a half from Baxter. Took a deflection off the defender. It was virtually behind him. And the keeper has bailed out Bolton from conceding there. And, well, when you're playing against the best defence in the league, it's always hard to score. Poor ball in. Davis will be able to recycle O'Connor. He got a lot of assists for us last year. Apparently was looking for a penalty. was never going to be given. Not really been the day. Holly Palmer is going to come on. We've given the ball away from that throw. It's probably going to be a goal now. Inward. Charles. Mm, good save from Arthur. 
CY has been one of our best players this year. I just feel like we just don't have the quality to win this league, which it is what it is. Davis is too far out to score. Baxter makes a good save, but a save that he should really be making. Let's see what else goes on. O'Connor will whip and does head it over the top by Palmer. Might put us to a bit more direct play for set pieces and float that ball in because Oli Palmer's on there. See if we can find something. Loop to Palmer, maybe. Jordan Davis is going to shoot or cross. Go short, Elliot Lee. Hits one. Elliot Lee might have just salvaged us the point. What a strike from Elliot Lee. And this sums up our season. A lot of these games in these tight moments, we have found a way this year. Which you could either read into that two ways. The one way that you're a really good side and that, of course, you don't know how to lose and it's a really good thing. We read into the way that I'm reading into it. The system's just not really cutting the muscle no matter what we play. Government's had his worst game of the year, but an Elliot Lee won the goal has made us get a point away from him against Bolton. We only had 38% possession, where teams have been keeping anywhere between 50 to 70% possession this year. Like We've had some games where we have heavily possessed sides. And, well, Elliot Lee has produced a moment of magic, and it is 1-1, and that is a goal and a half from Elliot Lee. We're right behind him here. Just bends it, backs this beat. It's perfect as it can be. Elliot Lee gives us a moment, and Elliot Lee is the hero. And we get a point, an important point. Actually puts us in the third, but it means Bolton is still only two points ahead of us. We're still one point ahead against Peterborough. If you have a look to it, we're only eight points ahead of, uh, sorry, six points ahead of Portsmouth. Nine points ahead of Barnsley. So you would say that anyway for the ninth and tenth is still obviously on the cards as well. And I'm going to keep saying this this year. My goal wasn't to get back-to-back -back promotions, but I always thought it was a possibility because of how good the Wrexham squad is in real life. If you tell me right now that we're in the second half of the year, we get these better players in, a couple of these kids that we're trying to bleed through, develop, and we finish seventh or eighth or ninth, the board are going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I got my tie against a Premier League club in second season two in the FA Cup, which will be next episode against Spurs. And I got my opportunity to try and be a giant killer. If you tell me that's how this season ends, I'll probably shake your hand and take it right now because it means that we're going to be one year better, one more year worth of uh, of figuring out if we're playing 4-1-2-1-2, 4-3-3, or we're moving into a five-at-the-back system, and one more year of building a team that actually fits the system because right now we've got a team that was being built for 4-1-2-1-2 that we've had to change the 4 3 because of results, and now we've got a little bit of a mismatch of a squad. But we're in a, a very good position in the league the board are very happy, obviously, with this. And from what I've seen this year, we're just plucky enough that I think we'll finish in the six and we'll have some playoff football at our minimum at the end of the season. But I won't be surprised if it is 7, 8, or ninth. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time for Spurs. That's not too far away for me. That's only in a few games' time. I'm not a big fan of making it so short. However, Spurs at home at the race course in season two in the FA Cup you know that it could be a giant killing day. If you get a like the episode, give it a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Big thank you to John01 Michael for following as well in the YouTube video. Very good shout out where you're watching from. See you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye.